About two years ago, Hyundai introduced a new lifestyle pickup truck called the Santa Cruz, and sales have been surprisingly strong. So for 2025, it's time for the Santa Cruz to get its first round of updates. I'm here on the show floor of the 2024 New York International Auto Show, and this bright orangey red thing here is the 2025 Santa Cruz. Let's take a first look. Now, before we start talking about the exterior styling changes for 2025, I thought I'd pop the hood and remind you guys what's powering this thing. This thing. Now, this is where my, it makes my job a little bit easier because Hyundai says that everything is kind of carry over here. So the base powertrain is still the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder, uh, making 191 horsepower paired up to an eight speed automatic transmission with either front or all wheel drive. Most Santa Cruz models, especially if you guys plan to actually do some towing and hauling, are gonna have this powertrain. This powertrain is unique to the Santa Cruz because as you guys know, it kind of shares a platform with the Tucson, but it's it's a turbocharged version of that 2.5 liter four cylinder gasoline direct injection. It makes 281 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque. That torque figure is significant. And unlike the base powertrain, this is connected to an eight speed wet dual clutch transmission. Uh, so again, Hyundai uses that for improved fuel efficiency uh, and of course, um, better performance. Now, uh, the difference or the big update here, however, is the fact that this powertrain now with the transmission includes a towing mode. So Hyundai says that this model can tow up to 5,000 pounds, go for the base engine and it'll reduce it down to 3,500 pounds. I don't have the final fuel economy figures yet or the zero to 60 performance, but this powertrain, when I tested it in the pre-refresh model, I found it to be a pretty good uh, match for the size of this vehicle. But let's go ahead and close up this hood, which as you can see is supported by a prop rod and close it up. But uh, this exterior color, which is interesting to me because it's clearly orange in this auto show light. However, Hyundai calls it Canyon Red. It's a new exterior color this year, along with Rockwood Green. And this particular one that I'm showing you is the XRT trim. So it's the most off-road capable version. And you can see the front end of this car got a pretty light style refresh. You can see the grille is a little bit larger and bolder. It still has these nicely integrated LED running lights, which is cool. It also has an LED turn signal integrated into the upper portion of the running lights. You can see the headlights are split from the actual project or daytime running lights where it's a projector low and high beam down here. It's a little bit blockier and larger versus the same headlight design in the Tucson. And you can see the XRT now includes these meaty tow hooks. That's a new addition this year. It's also color matched to this actual color, although I don't think that's color matched on other colors of the Santa Cruz. You can see down here the front fascia, it's a little bit more aggressive looking. Uh, but I don't believe this model has any skid plates uh, and it should have a little over 8.4 inches of ground clearance, which is a good amount. Although remember, this is still kind of a unibody construction. Now moving around to the side profile of the Santa Cruz, this is where it's just a light refresh. So in terms of the actual dimensions, they haven't changed. This vehicle is around 195.7 inches long with a 118 inch long wheelbase. Believe it or not, this car, this car when it first came out or this tr truck, you know, it, it's kind of came out alongside of the new Ford Maverick, but this is actually around four inches shorter versus a Maverick, but it is still around 12 inches longer versus the Hyundai Tucson in which it shares a platform with. You can see the wheels, these are the unique 18 inch wheels that kind of remind you like of a wrench um, with the two-tone look. This is also the first uh, Hyundai model, XRT model to actually get all-terrain tires, at least for the uh, Santa Cruz. You can see it's riding on a 245 by 60 R18, although I believe the Santa Fe, the new Santa Fe XRT also has all-terrain tires. I love the wheel arch trim here with the kind of uh, Easter eggs that you find of the actual Santa Cruz truck silhouette over here with this kind of textured look. This truck also has a fully independent suspension, which is nice. The XRT also includes these unpainted matte finished black mirrors along with some black trim along the door handles, this kind of like trim over here along the side sill. There's these nicely integrated roof rails, which is nice and also black painted. There's also a standard sunroof. If you're looking for a panel roof, uh, the Santa Cruz sadly doesn't offer it. And you can see this vehicle only comes as a crew cab configuration. So it has the four full size doors and the bed, as you can see here, uh, measures four feet by or four foot 4.3 inches long. So if you guys are requiring a longer bed, this is where something like the Ford Maverick is gonna be you know, a little bit more useful, but you can see the tail light design hasn't really changed. The rear bumper has some slight updates to it. There's a new XRT badge over here to show that you have the off-roady trim. And then there's big Santa Cruz stamped into the actual back of the truck a tailgate. There's also an H-Track badge here, and then the 2.5T to let everybody know you have the turbocharged engine. Now, looking at the trunk capacity or the bed capacity, you can see uh, this vehicle does have this really nice little tonneau cover that kind of slides open and it allows you to kind of use some very usable amount of space. Now, obviously it's a composite bed, so it doesn't require an actual bed liner, but it's still very usable. I believe this will carry a maximum of 1,400 pounds of payload in the bed, which is actually a pretty decent amount considering it has an independent suspension and a unibody construction. And just like the Honda Ridgeline, which is a bigger truck, there's also a nice little underfloor storage front here or trunk area, which I don't think you don't get that in the actual Ford Maverick. So that's definitely nice. Not quite as deep as the one that you get in the Ridgeline, 
but it's a good place where you can lock some items. You can also use that as a cool box because it has an actual drain. Uh, but overall, this pickup bed, even though it's only four feet, 4.3 feet long, it's still relatively usable and it's also a great place to put stuff and cover it because of that integrated tonneau cover. Now moving to the interior of the revised 2025 Santa Cruz, this is where if you guys saw my video on the 2025 Tucson, this interior is going to feel very familiar because it essentially got the same updates. I mean, they're the same vehicle underneath the skin. Uh, and this particular XRT that I'm showing you has the orangey red exterior with this kind of black leather interior. These seats are also heated. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if Hyundai will offer ventilated seats. They may on the top trim, but I know this trim doesn't have it. You can see uh, this model also got a brand new steering wheel. This is the same steering wheel that we've seen on the Kona and of course the Ionic 6 where they replaced the H logo with these four little dots, which is supposed to mean H in Morse code. The steering wheel itself also has a manual tilt and telescoping adjustment with paddles on the wheel. Uh, I also like the way the wheel looks itself. It's a very nice looking design, very clean and minimalistic, but you also have actual hard buttons here. Door panel materials, you can see they're soft touch injection molded plastic with some faux stitching over here, a cloth material here, padded over here, and then the windows are one touch up down for the front, however, not for the rear. And then the big story, of course, is the big infotainment upgrade. So uh, the upper trims are gonna have two 12.3 inch displays. So you have a 12.3 inch digital display here, and then another 12.3 inch display here that has their new CNCC updated software, which means this truck now has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. That's something that I complained about in the pre-refresh model, which is again a great touch. You have dual zone climate control here with actual knobs and button, buttons, which I really appreciate. There's a nice little storage area here on the dash along with this soft touch injection molded plastic with some faux stitching here. Your wireless phone charging pad is here and the center console is different compared to the Tucson. So the Tucson has that new electronic shifter here on the column, but you can see Hyundai kept the actual traditional shifter here in the center console, which does eat up some storage space here, but I actually think truck drive truck buyers are going to prefer that. Your drive mode selector is here. There's a center lock where it essentially will lock the all-wheel drive system in a 50-50 torque split. You have two USB-C charging ports here. Your wireless phone charging pad is here. And then you can see there's a nice padded center console here. Open this up and there's a pretty decent amount of storage space over here. So overall, the interior, while it doesn't have, appear to be wholly different, at least from the seat perspective, the tech upgrade along with the new steering wheel and the touch controls are a big upgrade that I think a lot of customers are going to prefer. Let's go ahead and hop into the back seat area because this is where the Tucson, or I'm sorry, the Santa Cruz also had a lot to offer here. Now, in terms of the flexibility back here, um, you can uh, still obviously put this seat up by pulling that. So if you pull this little strap, uh, you can see there's a little bit of underfloor storage underneath the seat. So that's some place where you can kind of hide some things, which is nice to have, especially inside the truck. But as I get in, you can see the legroom space is definitely very usable. Now, this is not where I'd have the seat to drive if I were going to actually drive this truck, but Hyundai says there's 36 and a half inches of legroom back here. Now, 36 and a half is not bad. You're going to find obviously more in something like the bigger Honda Ridgeline, but this is pretty comparable to the Ford Maverick. Material quality back here is hard touch plastic, unlike the front, so they did downgrade it, unfortunately. Uh, there's a cup holder over here. You have two map pockets, storage pockets. You have rear seat air vents, USB-C charging ports, and then if you fold down this armrest, you can see there's a cup holder here. This rear window also does allow you to kind of slide open manually. So it allows you to get a little bit of vent back here or maybe some small access to the bed. As you can see, headroom space is pretty good um, because there's no panel roof. There's actually a little carved out area for taller drivers, but overall, or for taller passengers, but overall you can see if you plan to use this as an actual family vehicle, the Tucson will certainly suffice. But if you need more space, be sure to check out a bigger truck. So last year in America, Hyundai managed to sell a little over 36,600 Santa Cruzes here in the States. And while that number trails significantly, this car's main competitor, the Ford Maverick, Ford did around 94,000 units in the same time frame. It is still a relatively good chunk of sales, especially considering the fact that this segment is technically new. And I'm really hoping that it's going to kind of open the doors for other brands to also introduce a smaller lifestyle truck. In terms of availability, if you guys are looking to get your hands on the 2025 Santa Cruz, they should be arriving in dealerships later this summer. The company wasn't ready to talk about final pricing just yet, but the current generation or the current 2024 version starts at just under $27,000. It goes to a little over 42 and a fully loaded model. So I expect this new version to start, still start probably under $30,000, but probably get closer to that $45,000 range, depending on, of course, uh, which options you decide to get and which trim level you decide to go for. For Redline Reviews here at the 2024 New York International Auto Show, I'm Sofian Bey.